Good morning. The first reading today is from Isaiah 35, verses 4 through 7, found on page 707 of your Pew Bible or 1440 of the large print. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and marshes and rushes. The word of the Lord. Please read Psalm 146 responsibly, found on page 622 or 1273 of the large print. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my need. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from James 2, verses 1 through 10 and 14 through 18, found on page 1200 or 2426 of the large print. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for a gospel. Our gospel reading for this morning is found in the book of Mark, chapter 7. Glory to you, o Lord. 
to uh, understand a little bit about what's going on here uh, this morning, we really need to look back at what we've talked about for the past few weeks. Jesus has been talking uh, to his disciples about uh, the traditions and the commandments that uh, they, they um, are, are held under by the religious people and talking about, is that really going to save you? And he talks last week about what defiles a person as we were talking about foods that they, they might eat. And Jesus says, it's not what goes into you that defiles you, it's what comes out of the heart. So it's the sin that's, that's in them. And so now Jesus is putting boots to the ground as he's going to Tyre and Sidon. That's where we pick up on verse 24. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way, the demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hands on him. And taking him aside from the crowds privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and, and said to him, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. And the children may come forward. Let's open this morning in prayer. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> Gracious Father, thank you for calling us into your family. For adopting us as your own children. You have called us out of the darkness of our sin into the light of your love. We can't fathom the, the love that would cause you to send your only son to die for our sin, breaking the barrier which kept us separated from you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to hear again of your love for us found in Christ alone. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our society, we, we tend to set up barriers, whether we realize that we're doing it or not. We build fences around our property for some of us, it's, it's to try to keep the wildlife out of our gardens and away from our fruit trees. We plant trees to create barriers to block the wind and to provide privacy by impeding the view of passersby. We place curtains on our windows. We have phones which allow people to enter that barrier if they need us, but then we block the callers that we don't want to allow into our our private space. We use caller ID in order for us to control who enters and when they are allowed. 
And then there's usernames and passwords and firewalls and all that stuff I have no idea about. Barriers. There are today political barriers, racial barriers, religious barriers, socioeconomic barriers, communication barriers. I could go on and on. The barriers that we set up are endless. Barriers. They're everywhere. But they are nothing new. These morning's readings, we find that Jesus faced barriers as well. There were cultural barriers where we find the divide between Jew and Gentile. In the past few weeks, we've been talking about a number of barriers here, how the Gentiles were considered to be unclean. Unclean to the point that the Jews had to ceremonially wash their hands before eating just in case they had come in contact with a Gentile. We also talked of some of the barriers found in eating of unclean foods with the thought that it was certain foods that defiled people instead of the sin which is in us defiling us. And we have been reading of the barrier of the law imposed upon the people by the religious leaders. The law God's perfect law, which was to be the guide for our relationships with each other and relationships with our God, had been so twisted by the teachings of the religious leaders that the poor people had come to believe that salvation was found only in their proper keeping of the law, not in God's mercy and grace. But in these words, we find that Jesus really was in the ministry of breaking barriers opening doors. In these words for this morning, we find Jesus continuing to show the disciples that the kingdom of God had arrived, not only for the Jews, but for you and me, the Gentiles. We find that Jesus was traveling in the area of Tyre and Sidon. He had just, as we talked about, confronted the Pharisees about what actually defiles a person, which is what we spoke about last week. But now Jesus has retired to the borderlands of northern Israel, lands inhabited by the Gentiles, the pagans, the non-believers. And he's seeking time away from the crowds, time with his disciples, and he's certain that those good, law-abiding Pharisees would not follow him into this land, which has been defiled, according to their religious rules, by these unclean Gentiles. Jesus comes to this land because he wants to be hidden from the crowds for a moment, but that was not to be. Jesus and his disciples, they enter this house to get away for a while. And when we read this same story in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, we find that they've been followed. They've been stalked by a woman, a Gentile, a Canaanite, on their journey. And the people of Cana were very familiar with the Jews, and there was no love lost between the two races. But this woman has a pressing spiritual need that no one has been able to take care of. And so she needs something from Jesus. She has heard of him and the stories of how he has cast demons from people during his ministry. And these words have reached her ear. And the words spoke to her very heart as her daughter now suffered with a demon. Barriers at this point meant nothing to this woman. She needed Jesus to bring spiritual restoration to her daughter, and though she didn't know it yet, to herself as well. She confronts Jesus. She's pleading for this restoration. Jesus says, let the children be fed first. For it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Did Jesus just call this woman a dog? Here we find one of the barriers that we are speaking about. Gentiles were not seen as being worthy of receiving the blessings from God. 
But Jesus is not being as harsh as what you and I might think using the words today. Though the Gentiles were to the Jewish religious leaders no better than dogs, Jesus uses a kinder word and tone with this woman. Using the word for a house pet, kunarian. In the Greek, Jesus is telling her that his ministry is to the Jewish nation first. And this, this part's pretty cool. This woman actually picks up on what Jesus is saying to her. She actually has more insight into who Jesus really is than the disciples at this point. And in her reply, this woman is essentially saying, you know, you're right, Lord. Your judgment is correct. I am no more worthy of your blessings than a house pet. We Canaanites know that the Jews are the children of God, but Lord, even the house pet gets the crumbs from under the children's table. This woman demonstrates faith in action. She accepts the words of Jesus. And she knows that even the crumbs of God's grace and mercy that Jesus made to offer her her are blessings. Blessings. This woman knows full well that she's not worth any of the blessings of God. But are any of us really worthy? We read in Romans chapter 3, For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For this Canaanite woman, Jesus has removed a barrier. And it's the same barrier that Jesus has removed from all who call on his name. We have all had to accept this same judgment of Jesus. Like this woman, we too have had to admit that we are not worthy of God's blessings. Yet Jesus' grace extends to all who believe and call on his name, just as his righteousness extended to this woman. In faith, Jesus drives the demon out of this woman's daughter. And as Jesus moves deep on deeper into Gentile territory, we read of some people bringing to Jesus a deaf man, their friend. Not only this, is this man deaf, but he, he cannot speak clearly. How could he? He'd never heard proper speech in his life. Besides, his tongue doesn't work properly. It's tied. This man has a need. He needs Jesus. He just doesn't know it yet. As with the Canaanite woman, we find people pleading with Jesus on behalf of those who cannot plead for themselves. And they they beg of Jesus to lay his hands on this deaf man to bring healing. Here we find another barrier. This man is Gentile, he's deaf, so he can't even hear Jesus speaking to him. And we find that communication can be a barrier to faith. And these friends are calling upon Jesus to heal him. Not only that, they're also telling Jesus what they expect him to do to bring the healing. Lay your hands on him. Bring this healing. But Jesus is in the ministry of breaking barriers. We read, and taking him aside from the crowd privately, Jesus puts his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue, and looking up to heaven, Jesus sighed and said to him, Ephathotra, will that is, be opened. Is Jesus giving us a pattern for healing here? Hardly. We hear the blessings as we read just how this barrier of communication is broken down this morning. Jesus is letting this deaf man know what's going to take place here. He puts his fingers in the man's ears. He spits, spit being considered a courier of healing, and he touches the man's tongue. And Jesus looks to heaven. Translated, Don't be afraid. I'm going to heal your ears. I'm going to heal your tongue. And the healing is going to come from heaven. And the scriptures tell us that his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. One word. Jesus works three miracles. 
The man hears, the man's tongue is released, and the man learns to speak a never-before-spoken language clearly. One word from Jesus breaks barriers and brings freedom. But more than this, Jesus speaking this one word reveals his divinity. Not only to the man, but to his friends and especially to his disciples. Jesus reveals that he is the son of God who takes away the sin of the world. The whole world. The barriers are gone. By Jesus' death and resurrection, salvation is available to all who will believe. These miracles show that Jesus, the word of God, will use that word to change lives. Here at Trinity, we have been blessed to see lives changed for Jesus. Through prayer and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we've seen spiritual and physical healings occur. God's word has broken through darkened and hardened hearts and the spirit has shown the light of the world, Jesus Christ, as he shatters those barriers as well. People have come to know that Jesus really does shatter barriers. They have come to realize that God's love isn't just an idea. It has indeed broken all those barriers which could keep people in the darkness of their sins. And God's love has changed them. More importantly, people have come to understand that God's love moved him to do specific things. His love moved him to send his son, Jesus Christ, to be born into this world of sin and darkness. And because of his love for us, Jesus taught and healed and cast out demons and demonstrated what God's love is all about. Because of his love, Jesus died on a cross to forgive us our sins. And because of his love, Jesus rose from the grave to conquer sin and death once and for all. Jesus' love moved him to act. Jesus' love moved him to act for you and for me in ways that we see every time we look at his cross. Every time we look at this baptismal font. Every time we receive his body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion, every time we see these things, God is reminding us of how his love moved him to act in specific, concrete, and measurable ways. He has changed us and brought healing into our relationships, purpose in our lives, and forgiveness of our sins. Jesus is a difference maker and a barrier breaker. Take a moment to look at what Jesus did did to this man healed of his deafness. What happened next? And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. At some point in your history, someone has told you these stories of Jesus' healings and much more. And the word of Jesus broke through the barriers in your life. The scriptures reveal to us that the gates of heaven have been thrown wide open. God has revealed his love for us, a love so deep that he would give his only begotten son to save us from our sins. He loved us that much. And these stories show us that Jesus is the fulfillment of all of God's promises for us. For we read in Isaiah 35 that when our Savior comes, he will be made known to all the world. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, and then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. There you have it. No more barriers. God's love is fully revealed to you in his son Jesus Christ, given for you in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus this morning. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord... Look upon you with favor 
and grant you his peace. Amen.